What's going on guys? If you watch a lot of poker content here on YouTube, then you have probably had your fill of annoying, over-the-top dramatic poker slogans, such as These five spots will transform your game. And You won't believe what he called with. And 10 sick bluffs, how to run over cash games. And of course, the good old Crush poker in three easy steps. Crush, crush, crush. I'm so sick of this word. I hate this word. It's so over the top. Many people watching this are not winning players yet. We can't just go straight to crushing. It's so disingenuous. Wait, did we use crush in the title for clicks again? Anyway, today it's all about me, 25 hands, and some dense technical review. I'm going to blast through these. I'm going to say what I think of them. They're all hands that I've played, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's just poker content, no gimmicks. Before we get started though, one quick thing to announce, and that is that these 25 hats will transform your win rate. Now let's get started. Hope you like it. All right, guys, I'm going to be on my best behavior here. We're going to fly through these hands. I know you love this format, so let's get into it. Jack nine of spades here. These are all spots, by the way, that have just been played fresh out of the oven a few minutes ago doing my bankroll challenge content for my subscription service on carrot corner at the moment compiling a bunch of footage and these are some hands from one of the sessions so we open jack nine suited here under the gun a little bit loose but one of my favorite starting hands that you will know if you follow my content ace nine six rainbow we go for a small c bit here with a really wide range not much to say on the jack turn which is going to be playing over bets on this node i can go 2x pot i can go 1.5x pot here really depends on how i'm feeling doesn't really matter we go for B150 on the turn, and Bellin calls again. The river's the eight of spades. They have basically no straights here. They have no queen 10. They have no seven five or anything like that. These hands just can't make it. The river, no 10 seven. So yeah, there's gonna be some hands like two pair here that beat us from time to time, like ace nine, ace jack, ace six, etc. that didn't raise the flop. But I think this is still plenty thick enough for another river bet. I don't think we're gonna be going all in here if we did have a hand like a straight, we could play the all-in sizing for 5x pot. We could also play like a smaller over bet for 1.5 to 2x pot. We decide to use the B75 here with this hand. I think when you have a hand that has around 80% equity, as expect our hand does here, you could look this up in the solver and let me know if that's overly optimistic. But if we have around 80% equity, then this is going to be the right sizing. Let me know in the comments how much equity does Jack Nine of Spades have in GTO on this board after the overbet gets called. Villain does pay us off this time after a bit of a tank call with the ace-queen. If your opponent's incredibly nitty, you probably just want to pass on this value bet on the river, but I think this is totally fine. Plenty thick enough and nice to get one paid off. Pocket jacks in the cutoff. We open small, we get called. Flop is a 7 3 This is really just a bread and butter spot against a fish. You can see here from the stack depth that this is indeed a weaker player. And we check back on the flop. I think jack is just way better than bet here. You see people bet here. Honestly, it's a play that's born mainly out of laziness. There's no reason to bet this flop. Yes, in GTO, 100 BBs deep, it doesn't really make much difference. Building the pot has a few advantages. I won't really get into them, but against the recreational player, the thing is that checking the flop just allows their range to remain so much wider. It really does increase the scope for them to just commit errors. So I'm a big fan of checking behind here. On the king turn, we obviously check back again. We're in kind of no man's land of our range. Not enough equity to go ahead and value bet here. And really just encouraging our opponent to do silly stuff on the river. We have a massive range advantage here. Therefore, their range needs to be really well behaved and constrained. But they're not going to do that. They are going to go ahead and randomly bet for sizes like this. Really easy call. Not much else to say. If you level yourself into folding in this spot, then you know what I'm going to say. Do I really need to say it? Okay, guys, fine. You don't deserve to play the game. You should quit the game immediately. You should be ashamed of yourself. So we call. And we win against the flush draw, which could, of course, have bet earlier. Chose not to. Chose to bet the river. It's actually like a good hand. This fish nailed it here. Like GTO play to bluff the busted flush draw on this node is actually a good thing because the idea is that we bluff many of our one spade and two spade air hands already. And thus two spades unblocks the heart and club air. A little bit of diamond air as well, though that bets flop quite a lot that we actually have here. So you want to unblock your opponent's air when you're bluffing the river in a really crappy spot like this for villain. So they picked the right combo to bluff with here. Their play's probably all right, but that's not the point. The point is they're probably betting indiscriminately with way too many air combos on that node. So, love the check back, check back, call line. King Jack off, we open hijack, we get peeled by small blind, we go for a small bet here. 
Take all, I think this is a turn spot where you're going to do okay with a b75. I wouldn't really use any overbets on this node with the queen queen a. I think for value you probably can exploitatively. I think it's just a spot where the elasticity in villain's range, that's how sensitive villain's range is to sizing. It's just not going to be enormous. I don't think there's like loads of hands here that don't fall to this but do fall to an overbet for example. So in these more minimal elasticity spots I like to just keep my bluff sizing a little bit smaller. And Villain is very kind here and just tells us that they have an immensely nutted hand, like Nines Full or Queen Nine or something like that, or a straight flush, and just leads the river. So, really easy non bluff there. Had Villain checked, you could consider bluffing with this hand. I'm inclined to mainly bluff with one diamond in my hand here, but I don't absolutely hate this hand. It does have blockers to slow played King Queen and Queen Jack and will unblock most of the folding range, which would be stuff like 8x or pocket 10s, etc. So I think it's an okay bluff if checked to in the river, maybe another B75 is in order. Overbetting more with one diamond would be my strategy there. Sixes in the small blind, I did say I would review 25 hands here. These are just hands where we saw the flop, saw the turn and the pot was a certain size. Unfortunately, in this one, we weren't really involved. It was a multi-way pot where we just got out of the way. So not much to say, but for completeness' sake, I did review this hand. It is on our tally. 10-8, off in the big blind here, we make a loose defend. In this pool, I have a pretty big skill edge. I'm very confident. Making calls that are mixes in GTO, I would not be rolling an RNG in any of these spots. I'm just going to take the spots and say to these players, no, you can't have my big blind. I'm going to defend because I'm going to have an edge post flop. 8, 8, 7, 2 tone, we go for a check, villain goes for a small bet. This is super lazy and sloppy when people do this too wide, as they do at micro and low stakes. I think this is the sort of bet that you really just want to get out of your system as quickly as possible. Yes, you can bet small here, but you're meant to do it with a fairly refined range. If you're someone who range bets this board lazily, I think you're going to end up meeting your maker when you move up in stakes and people will just start destroying you, demolishing you with raises on a board like this. So we do raise this time. You can also call... With the 10 of hearts, I'm a little bit more inclined to race because I have a card that when the 10 comes on the turn, actually I'd make a boat with the 10, wouldn't I? Maybe I don't want the heart here. Maybe not having the heart's quite cool because the 10 of hearts can come and they can make a flush and I can make a boat. It's like a total cooler kind of hand. So maybe I actually want to unblock that card here, but it's not really a big deal. We go for the check raise this time. I think calling is okay as well. And the turn is the six of hearts. Whenever you check raise the flop, you represent a really polarized range. You have like value combos here, like King 7, A7 plus, mainly trips, bluffs, things like that. Maybe some other hybridy hands in there as well, but mostly going to be a strong value region and bluffs. So when a card like this comes, a bunch of your bluffs just complete. Like it's very hard to actually miss this card. So what happens is that your range in terms of equity actually overtakes villain's range. At the point where you raise the flop and they call, you have a nut advantage, but you don't actually have an equity advantage, range versus range. But on this card, you actually gain the equity advantage as well. That allows you to bet really often, but it does remove your nut advantage because now all of your trips, which you held the monopoly over when you raised the flop and villain called, you had more of those as a density of your range than villain did. They've now been negated and villain's flush draws have moved ahead of you. Their over pairs have picked up outs. This is a case where you've lost nut advantage, but you've gained some kind of range advantage. So the way to play these spots is to use a small sizing fairly freely. You can almost range bet this spot for a small size, even though it's a turn spot and that might sound a little bit weird. Villain folds, we take the pot. But yeah, thin value betting with our specific combo there. Jack 10 of diamonds, we go for a call here. We go four ways. This pool is also just super soft and recreational. So a lot of the time I end up just creeping into pots, taking looks at flops with hands that I might otherwise squeeze or fold. This is one I'm never folding pre, but I think calling with this configuration of table is better than squeezing, but it's really close. Squeezing is okay as well. It checks all the way through. I go for the slight overbet on the turn. The idea here is that my value region is eights and nines mostly, and I'm just kind of trying to apply a ton of pressure in a spot where people might overfold and underprotect their flop checking ranges. I don't think this is theoretically much of a thing because checking ranges would be a bit more protected. And I have relatively few combos of nutted stuff in my range here. For example, I don't ever really have a deuce. I have a bit of pocket eights and then even pocket nines. I'm probably squeezing a fair amount of the time pre-flop. So this is the play that I'm going to end up over bluffing with if I'm not careful. I think it does have a place in my strategy, but I'd have to use it sparingly if I cared about balance, but I don't get called here by the big blind. This is probably just some kind of 9x that check flop or something of that nature, maybe 8x. We get called by button as well. We river the jack. We have some showdown value now. We're winning a decent amount of the time. There's no way we can get value though. I think it's way too thin against two opponents. So just opt for a check here and end up losing to the ace jack of clubs, which binked the jack on the river.
a6 of spades now, we're in the big blind, we defend here, ace, eight, deuce, go for a check, face third pot, easy call, on the turn we check, and villain checks back. On the river, you've got one option really, and it's block bet. You could check here, it's not ridiculous, but with the low card like a six, you are going to unblock quite a lot of the offsuit bluffing combos like jack nine, jack ten, queen jack, king ten, king jack, king nine, queen nine, etc. So I don't hate a check here, unblocking those bluffs. The other option is, of course, just to block bet for value. You need about 70%, 65% equity to start doing this, and I think that hand comfortably has that, but not enough to make a bigger bet. We go for a block, we get paid off by the jacks with the diamond. Seems like a reasonable -ish call. Probably a hand that's quite close between all of the options, raise, call, and fold. If they did raise here, it would obviously be some kind of bluff. Ace-king offsuit here, and we go for an open. We are cold called by the cutoff and called by the big blind. We flop queen-jack-10. All the same, I go for really tiny bets on these kind of boards most of the time that I'm betting. There are reasons for that that I won't go into in a speed review session format. We get raised here by the cutoff cold caller, really easy call. Obviously, we're doing far too well with the royal flush draw and straight flush draw here, as well as the maid straight and general flush draw to ever consider folding. But why on earth would we three bet and turn our hand into some catastrophic polarization disaster? Don't want to do that either. Turn is a king. They bet again. Not really happy here. I think we're against quite a lot of flushes, but also just some chops and stuff. This is going to be a really under bluff spot, but with the extra outs here to the absolute uber nuts that can just stack people really easily, we could probably donk all in on the river here on the nine of spades or something like that, or check raise all in, depending what we felt was best, but we want to play for stacks certainly. But yeah, we do still have a, a chop some of the time here in live redraw. A lot of the other times when they just have like an eight high flush or nine high flush or something like that. So we decide to check, they check back, and we show down against the hand that's played incredibly weirdly. I think the turn bet is super thin here by Villain. The flop raise is kind of just way too loose in this configuration and just a very badly played hand in general that Villain was lucky to escape with a chop. So off the hook on that one, my friend. Ace five off in the cutoff, another one of these lighter opens that I would suggest making whenever you feel like you have a decent skill edge in the pool. Flatted by button here, we just check a 6-6. Six, six. It's not a fantastic board for range, and we want to do a ton of checking here in general. We also just think that the recreational population is probably flatting too wide, probably making quite a few mistakes against the check here, and thus it's going to be to our advantage to go ahead and check here. So sure enough, our opponent does begin with a lead here, which is going to be a kind of all over the place, complete dog's dinner of a range without the necessary polarization or care. And that's one reason why we want to go ahead and check here in the first place to induce this kind of behavior. Villain then bets the turn and we call and then on the river probably just going to check all down here. I think you just see enough random weird stuff. Villain checks back and has queen nine of clubs so I didn't even notice what their hand was while I was playing live just earlier there. But yeah, not surprised to see just some random hand that's too loose pre betting a couple of times without any real thought or plan. Post flop here, this is why I can't stress enough, it's really good to check, especially out of position, against weaker players with weak top pair. It's a really good rule that will stand you in good stead. Just because a solver says that, you know, you're indifferent between betting and checking the flop there, that it's close. That's not the case in reality. In reality, check is just much better. Pocket fours, min open here, we decide to creep in again, a softer table in which we want to get involved. King five three, we check back here this is actually really close i opted to call here we do have the live gutter we have a bluff catcher and on certain rivers we'll be able to turn our hand into a bluff for example if villain checks a spade river i think it'll just be really underprotected and the fold equity will be really high there's some other cards here that might generate quite a lot of fold equity like an ace as well and of course we have the two outs to a set and four outs to a straight so i think calling here is pretty reasonable on the 10 river villain decides to check on this one i decided that i didn't really have to turn the hand into a bluff I didn't feel like the fold equity was overly high here. The thing is that villains turn sizing somewhat polarizing. They're going to have a lot of king x here, which if it does check, the river is basically never folding. If they have something like 10x of spades, it's very dubious whether that's folding as well. And I don't expect villain to lead the turn with a ton of 7x, pocket 8s, pocket 9s, 5x, etc. So there's an absence of that belt of hands that beats us but might fold to a river bet here. So I think we just take the showdown value, which... Definitely there is some, there's some hands in villains range here, like 8-9 or ace-jack or just some random leads that we're ahead of, queen-jack, ace-six, just whatever it may be, so opt to take the showdown value against those, and villain does have king-queen, so glad not to have bluffed the river on that one. 6-3 suited, we peel against under the gun, kind of loose, kind of light, but I think it's fine. Against this bet, you can raise or call, raising obviously you're trying to say to your opponent, 
hey man, this is one of these times when I've just flopped bottom set or second set or jack seven suited and I'm going to take all of your money when you have an overpair. We're going to play for stacks if you do raise here with the three. Common thing that you will do on many turn and rivers is just bomb and blast off. This is going to be a really common sort of raise and triple spot. If you do raise here, you don't have to believe you can also just call, which we do this time. But finding these bottom pair raises in this spot is definitely a little trick that you could find a useful tool to add to your inventory. We decide to check the turn, of course, and when villain checks back, we river at three. Easy over bet, not much else to say. We have massively the top of our range. It really is just a three that's able to do this here. We don't have any slow plays from the flop that do this because sevens and threes would raise there. So it's a very easy line to overbluff with if we're not careful. If I was looking at this and I was playing in this pool, I might be like, yes, yeah, sure you do, mate. Like, sure, you're controlling your bluff frequency here. Good one kind of thing. Because if you think about all of the 10-8, 10-9, sort of queen-10 suited backdoor, these busted draw hands, 5-6, five, 5-4, six, five, four, four, six, there's so many hands like this. It's so easy for us to be overbluffing. I'm almost shocked we didn't get called. Probably we just ran into like king-9 or someone who just believed us. Queen jack off here, we raise the small blind, we're called by the big. You could check raise here, you can bet here, it doesn't really matter. On the ace turn, I think this is a pure barrel or close to it with the jack of hearts, you're reducing villain's continuing range here. That's what you want to do, you don't want to level yourself into thinking, I don't want the jack of hearts, I block his flush draws. It's like, yeah, you want to block his flush draws, you bozo. That's exactly what you want to do. You don't want him to call you, you want this player to fold, block their continuing range, unblock their... King Jack of Spades, you know, that's more likely to fold than the Heart or Club variants. So go for the B75 here, which is a weird sizing, actually. No, it's not. In the ace turn, I would always do this, actually, come to think of it. This is a slightly polarizing turn for my opponent. It makes them two pair. It just makes their range a bit less mergy than it was before. And I don't think we have a big enough nut advantage to overbet on this card. Although I think it's, like, not ridiculous. I wouldn't really do it. Six River, really easy bluff. We have the Jack of Hearts blocker. We have no showdown value. When you have a positive blocker like this, it's just going to be blocking continues, blocking nutted stuff. You want to go ahead and overbet again. You would do this with your good flushes. You can also have some smaller sizes here as well for other hands in your range. Villain folds, we get it through. Happy days. Ace five suited under the gun. We open, we get called by the player directly to our left. And again, of course, this is a weaker player. We go for the check. Super standard stuff. We go for check call here. We check the turn. This spot, when they pot it, after like a really big bet on the flop and then a pot size bet on the turn, I'm much less happy here. There's a lot less weird stuff going on in such early position after big bet pot than there was earlier after like later position and then just two like smallish bets. So I think already we're pretty indifferent on this turn. I don't hate a call. I think fold is also reasonable. I just elected to get out of the way here. I think pot is generally just as a pattern a much less bluffed sizing than B75 or B60 or B50 from the fish population. So when they do pot it, there's quite a large chunk of the demographic of weaker players who are basically just trying to make up for lost ground, just build the pot as quickly as possible and get greedy. So I'm not saying I had a read that I was definitely behind there or anything like that, but I think we have a bluff catcher in a spot where I feel like people are just probably not bluffing as often for that particular combination of sizings than they are for others. So elected to make a tight fold, which I think is about zero EV to continue there probably as well, so not really a big deal either way. Pocket queens, we 3-bet into small blind to 10 bigs, we are 4-bet to 22, and we opt to just peel here. We could also jam, I think both plays are fine. If it was one position later, I'd be in pure jam mode, but I'm just mixing in a bit of slow play here. Sometimes when I think I have an edge in the pool, I would rather just say something like, I think this pool is passive enough to like under cold 4-bet, or to under 4-bet here, but I think I can do reasonably well against them post-flop, so I elect to play a pot here, even though it's a bit tricky out of position, on quite a few flops, like this one. We check it over, villain goes for quarter pot, and we opt to call. I think this is totally standard. People are betting range here, they could be 4-betting jacks at some frequency, they're obviously bluffing the flop, but the 4-bet bluffs a lot, that sort of thing. On the turn, we are now already getting pretty indifferent, we're blocking not too many bluffs here. The spade and diamond hands, in theory, are meant to give up the most, because they block our hands like king, jack of diamonds, queen, jack of diamonds, king, queen of diamonds, these kinds of things, and spades, of course. So when we have these two queens, we probably do unblock most of the bluffs here that are actually meant to bluff. That's not necessarily the case in reality. And at this price, I, I thought I would just call and challenge my opponent to bluff the river often enough. Of course, they can have some hands like king-queen off here or something like that or some suited king. 
The turn call is, is pretty close to zero EV, I would imagine, and on the river with absolutely no club blocker. And just queens, we have probably one of the worst hands that we could ever call with, and I think 4-bet pot that's tripled off here is probably more underbluffed than overbluffed, so just elect to fold this one. Turn is close, you could probably make a case for folding on turn already, but I opted to call. Ace-9 off, we open cutoff and call from small blind and big blind. 776 going to be checking back on this one and just folding the turn here, not much to say. Ace-8 of diamonds, we peel in the big blind, king-jack-5 to tone and we accidentally lead the flop. That's hilarious. I must have thought I was the under the gun opener and that's what I thought. I thought I was under the gun and I thought this player was the hijack in game. So I thought I'll play a big bet polar strategy here because I have a pretty big nut advantage. I have way more of the case king, king-jack, jacks, etc. than my opponent. So I'll build some big bets here. Obviously this is absurd, you should be checking range here. In before the chat pros in the comments are like, Oh, you're such a bad coach, you don't bet the flop! Don't understand it, like, humans are fallible when they're four-tabling. I think I got a phone call around this time as well when I was playing excuses, excuses. Well, now that we still think we're barreling under the gun against hijack, we went for an overbet here, which I think is fine. And then we binked the flush after our crazy donk line and went all in. Did we get called? Did we? Did we? No, we did not terrified of the large donk overbet donk jam like it's terrifying on this card like how are we bluffing here this is an insane line if, if he was the call here with like king queen it would be one of the worst calls i've ever seen in my life as absurd as our line is that would be crazy little open here from utg we call king jack queen queen eight and this is getting kind of close i think this is just going to be a fold for some reason we have called here I'm getting up to some kind of fancy play syndrome here, like trying to, I don't know, push the boundaries a little bit. I think we need a backdoor to continue against under the gun here. Against button or something, we should be continuing, but this just looks like a mistake to me. That said, we've got here now, we've got to bluff the river for some sort of sizing. I think small is okay, big is okay. You could also play some over bets. You have like pocket sevens, which you could go like 3x pot with. You have some hands like slow blade queen x that you can just over bet normally. You have hands like pocket jacks that you could be 75 and you have hands like 8x or 9s or something that you could block. There's just like loads of sizes you could bet here, just mix it up a little bit. Block might be the one they play the worst against actually because they have to call a lot of ace high here. He does actually find a call with ace jack which is probably a good call against me just lazily calling flop too wide and lazily blocking river. So well done to villain but yeah we're a little bit too loose there on the flop I think. Jack 8, we open the button and it's called by Big Blind. 8, 3, deuce. I use big bets or checks here. I, I'm a big fan of checking weak top pair in pools like this. I think people just go really wrong later. King turn, we check back again. I think you can start betting here. It's a little thin. Villain's range is a bit polarized after the king turn comes. They're not going to have connectivity with 8, 3, deuce very often, especially when we have an 8. So most of their hands are air or a king. So checking back seems like it makes a lot of sense. There's some in between stuff as well, of course. And then on the river, mandatory value bet, we do get paid off this time by pocket sevens and we ship a nice pot. Interestingly, I think villains should be block betting the river pretty frequently there. Going for value, we have so many low pairs and ace high on that node. Many of them have to call a block bet. So I think block bet is the preferred play there in GTO with two sevens. Sixes, we go for an open in the cutoff. We're raised by the big blind. We call jack 10 10, check check. Four of clubs, check, check, and for some reason we're just allowed to show down here and win against Ace 8 of spades. It feels like this board's a bit good for villain now. Maybe they don't have to bluff like all Ace King, Ace Queen, Ace High here, but they've, they've got to bluff like quite a lot of it by now. I don't know, it's unusual to be allowed to win here with two sixes. This board's also not bad for us though, so maybe it's not a situation where villain just bluffs all hands worse than Ace Queen or anything like that. Not sure about this one, you can look this up and let me know. Is this hand allowed to just check down here? I'm not so sure, maybe. Maybe not. I suspect not. Although they are big blind. Big blind is a weird spot. I think if they're small blind, they almost certainly have to be bluffing by now with this hand in big blind. It's weird. They have a ton more like air hands and stuff here, like king five suited and stuff like that. So maybe it's an okay give up. Ace five of hearts. We go for a call here at the small blind, which I think is okay. We lead this flop as a bluff. Villain calls and we go for the overbet on the turn with a double gutter, which I think is pretty good here. Villain calls on the 7 river. The 7's annoying because what it does is it removes combos of 7-6, seven, 7's seven, from our range. It just makes it harder for us to have a value bet. And it makes it probably a bit more tempting for most human beings to call with an overpair if we jam the river. I think my sizing here is jam. 
it doesn't really make sense otherwise. And honestly, I think this hand is quite a good candidate. We're blocking a hand like ace-6 or ace-9, which is one of villain's most primary bluff catchers. We're unblocking diamonds. I think this is the theoretical hand to jam with here, the ace-5. It looks really good to me. I don't think we're allowed to win ever here if we check. They're just meant to bluff their jack-10 of diamonds or 10-8 of diamonds or whatever, right? Okay, they don't have that, but you get the point. So I think we should actually jam the river here. I was a little bit distracted in this session and checked here, but I think this is probably a very good candidate to just rip with, and that would, of course, put Villain into an incredibly unpleasant blender-like situation with the two tens here. King-9 suited, we go for a call here. Flop a flush, go for the check raise, get called. I just went for a big bet here in a turn. My thinking was quite simple. It was just that this will be super under bluffed if I check. If I ever decide to slow play here, no one's ever finding the bluff raises. So I'm just going to go for value. When you're in a spot where your opponent has to play like a bit of a psychopath to play like the solver, don't take the passive line with the nuts that the solver says is okay at some frequency. It's not okay at any frequency to check here. Go for the value. Villain has loads of hands like the 10 of hearts, the jack of hearts, the queen of hearts. Go for the value. We're all in. We don't get paid off this time at Celevi. Ace King, go for a small open here. King 10 deuce. We go for a small bet on the flop, followed by 2x pot on the turn. When the turn texture is incredibly sort of static and dry like this, and it boosts our nut advantage even more, I really like to turn the screw here with the massive sizing. So 2x pot's nice. On the Queen River after this line, I don't think we have the option of value betting after 2x pot. We could value bet a Brick River here, of course, with Ace King. And we have some B75s in our strategy here still for those hands. But as played here, I think just to check. And we win against Queen Jack. Man, this is an exhausting bonanza of hands. This is like, I've never spoken so much for a 30 minute straight period in my life. That's a lie. Every video is like this. Open cutoff again. A bit of a loosey-goosey open. But you'll note that there is a recreational player in the small blind. They call. We have a flop of three, five, six. Going to do a load of checking back here against lead. I'm not going to reopen with raising. It just allows jam. It's going to perform much worse than call, which is of course the best play. On the jack of hearts turn, I think we do really, really well by betting. Probably even better than we do in game theory. Following through on river here is also going to be an option. There's a lot of pair plus straw hands that can call one but not two. Eights with a heart, sevens with a heart, fours, etc. So we go for this play and bill and folds. So not much else to say. Ace four diamonds now, we go for a three bet, we are called, king queen four, another one that we could have considered tripling this one, third pot and flop, we barrel the turn here with the four, this is a really useful barrel because it gets some under pair to fold that are beating it obviously, like crushing it, when we do get folds from a hand like ace jack or ace ten, we're obviously cleaning up a ton of outs here, and just the fold equity is incredibly useful, and if we're called by ace queen, king queen, king jack etc, we'll have the chance to suck out on the river. Finally, if we get jammed on by like the Jack-10 of spades or something, it's not the biggest disaster in the world to squander your five outs here. It's not like you have a flush draw or something like that. So reopening is totally okay. So big fan of the barrel on the turn. I think this one's probably pure. When villain calls and we get the nine river, I think we have probably more Jack-10. Like villain's going to be raising flop at some frequency maybe and also jamming turn with theirs. So we have more Jack-10 here. What do we want our bluffs to be? Well, I guess one question is like, do we ever just win here by checking this hand? And I think the answer is in theory, no, because like ace jack of space should probably just jam the turn in theory. If we do win against that, that's obviously an argument for checking back. I think in pool, there will be more like passively played not flush draw hands, like ace five, ace jack, ace 10 of spades. So maybe we win very occasionally, but I think just following through here, there's a load of like Queen Jack, Ace Queen, King Jack, King 10 suited in Villain's range here. And it's going to be in a really gross spot now. This is one that, I don't know, man, like the four isn't really adding anything positive to the equation, but nor is it like a negative card. I think it's much better to bluff with the four than with the Jack here, because if you have a Jack, you're just more likely to block the folding range in this spot. So this is another one that if I could do it again, I think I'd go all in with this particular hand. I don't think trying to block Jack 10 is really that important here. Villain shows up with King 8, indicating that there's some kind of recreational whaleish player, and that doesn't fill me with confidence for a fold equity. So we may have dodged a bullet and got away with one there, but we didn't know that at the time, and overall I think it's a pretty cool bluff spot. Final hand for the day, guys. Hand 25. We are in the big blind with King 8. We call a button raise again, just erring on the side of playing when I think I have a skill advantage. We flop two pair. Villain bets big. We raise Pretty standard, two of clubs turn, we go for the large turn C bit here, and villain calls again. River's a bit dicey, I think we still probably have a jam here, it's only 34.8 into 53.9, so you're talking like 60% pot or something to that effect. 
you don't have to have a ton of equity here to make this thin value bet. In fact, you can make a shove here, get called and be a slight dog. And that can still be the best play because checking doesn't end the hand for you. If you're in position, it's a bit closer to just checking back. But out of position, I think you just go for value. Aces, ace king, king queen. Loads of hands here that can still pay you off with a club locker or without. It doesn't really matter. You got to just rip it here. We get the fold. No dice. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this format. It was definitely an exhausting one to make. If you're a fan, don't forget to check out CarrotCorner.com for more of our content, including exploitative course Cash Injection that gives you 10 very quick to implement fixes that will just help you basically save your red line and improve your win rate massively if you can apply them with minimal work. Cash Injection and more is over at CarrotCorner.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.